Hello everyone, today we're going to talk all about the static modifier in C Sharp and how to use it in different cases. Before we start, it is important to know that I will be assuming that you have used Unity before and are familiar with the basics of Unity in C Sharp, classes and structs, and principles of object oriented programming. With that out of the way, let's begin. By marking something as static in C Sharp, we are basically ensuring that there will only be one instance of it. What do I mean by that? Well, take, for example, in a class, if we mark any member as static, that member won't be a part of the individual objects created from the class. It would rather belong to the type itself. So let's better understand this by taking a look at an example. As we can see, we have a person class with two fields, a name and an age. Now, let's say we were given a task to keep track of how many person instances we have in our whole program. You may think that we should just create another class for this, and you're right, we could have a class called person manager to keep track of all person objects. However, a more elegant way to do this is by declaring a static field in the person class itself called person count. Just like fields, methods can be static as well. So let's create a method called add person, which will take in a person object as a parameter. Inside of the method, let's increment the person count variable and let's output some message about the person that we created. It is also important to note that in static methods, we can only access items that are in a static context. Now I have a game manager script that is currently a part of a game object in my Unity scene. As you can see, I had already created several objects of the person type. Now. After creating each one, let's call the addPerson method. You might be wondering how we would actually call it because it's static. Well, if we try to call it like this, it's simply not going to work. So in order to call it, we wouldn't refer to the object. We would actually refer to the type itself. Now let's do the same for person2. All right, now let's try to run this. And as we can see, the code works just fine. So by specifying that a field or a method is static, it will no longer belong separately to each instance of the person class. There will only be one instance of it, and it will be tied to the type instead. So in other words, I cannot access the person count like this because it is a part of the static context. And in order to refer to it, I would be referring to the type first and not the object. So let us try and see how the person count changes each time we call the add person method. So as we can see, the person count is changing appropriately. The person count is incremented each time we create an object of the person type. Now, along with fields and methods, properties can also be static. In fact, let's use only a property instead of a field. Now that I've shown you that methods can be static, let's remove our add person method and just increment the person count in the constructor of the person class. And I have adjusted the game manager script because we made some changes to the person class. So if we try to run the game again, we'll see that our person count still changes appropriately because we're incrementing the person count every time we call the constructor, or in other words, every time we create a person object. Speaking of constructors, they can be static too. So this is how you would declare a static constructor. And inside of here, we can initialize our static fields. And what's interesting about the 
static constructors is the fact that they cannot contain any parameters. So if I were to just try to add a parameter in here, it would simply not work. A static constructor must be parameterless. And generally, static constructors are used very rarely. They're not called every single time we create a person. They're called every single time your program starts. There are not many use cases for them. And instead of them, we basically initialize our static variables when we are basically declaring them, just like so. Well, in our case, we don't need to do that. Now, let's talk about a different use case for the static modifier. So classes can also be static. Now, static classes are pretty limited. What do I mean by that? Well, they can either be public or internal. You cannot inherit a static class from another static class. They're basically sealed automatically. And you might be wondering, well, what do I actually do with a static class? And what purpose does it serve? Well, obviously, you can declare static variables inside of them. You can't declare normal variables. So writing something like this would throw an error because a static class can only contain static members. As you can see, this is a valid piece of code because our name variable is marked as static. So let me show you some other use cases of the static class. In my applications and games in general, I like to create a static class called globals where I keep all of my constant variables. So yes, another key feature of static classes is that they can contain constant variables. So let's try to create a constant variable in here. I'm just going to call it name. Now I can refer to this field pretty much anywhere because it's under a public static class. So let's go to our game manager script and let's refer to it. And as you can see, this works just fine. But did you know that there's another thing that we could do to simplify this? So if we go to the top of our script and write using static and then dan.dummy class, we essentially expose the components of that class to this whole script. And this is a very minor thing, but when you're working a lot with constant variables like this, it can be helpful by just exposing all of those constant variables to a script so that you don't have to refer to the static class always prior to, prior to accessing your constant variables. Now, another use case that a public static class can have is creating common functions. So your program may require to do a lot of calculations. For example, cubing a number. Say, for example, you also need to calculate the hypotenuse of a triangle. And so you could basically couple a lot of mathematical functions or any functions in general into one static class and use them in your program without having to repeat a lot of code. So any repeating chunk of code that you see, you could couple them in a static environment like this, which could allow you to simplify your code and make it more readable or perhaps more cleaner. Now, the second use case is by far the most effective one that I've seen for static classes, and that is the creation of extension methods. Now, as an example, let's take a function that will get us the closest game object from an array to a specific game object. Now, we could declare it like this. This will work just fine, but by using the concept of extension methods, we could simplify this or make this look even more elegant. What do I mean by that? So specifically in static classes, what we could do is use the this keyword. And if we put it directly at the beginning of the first parameter, what we could do is instead of putting our first parameter in its place, we would put it directly before the method followed by a dot. It would look something like this. And so basically what we did here is we extended the game object class to include our very own method. And I find this very useful for creating 
additional methods for the default classes that Unity has and in general it could be very handy and that's basically what you could use a static class for. So I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you like what you saw, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.